Welcome back everyone. I'm here with my friend Jason today and in this week's video we're going to give you posing tips for men. That way you'll be able to go from boring shots like this to more dynamic poses like this. And we're going to show you how to pose from toe to head so that you can get more dynamic and great shots on your next shoot whether you're a model or you're a photographer. So I've been a photographer for about 20 or so years and Jason you've been a model for how long? about 20 or so years. <laughs> okay, so I think we kind of know what we're doing. So let's start off by talking about feet. So one of the things I've heard is that you should always keep a heel off the ground, and that way it looks far more interesting than just this straight leg sort of thing. In fact, I'll also talk about maybe having the legs crossed like this, that way you're seeing a gap between the shoe, and even better if you can see a gap here uh, between my knees. It's also good for fake walking and that sort of thing. And the only time I think that you should see um, the toe off the ground is if it's in a fake walking pose sort of like this. So what are some things you've learned about posing feet? Um, as far as posing feet, uh, always, you know, have a good uh, distance away from, uh, you know, from, from heel to toe. Uh, you never want to be too closed leg. Um, always, you know, make sure if you are walking, you don't have to take a whole step. Uh, just, you know, kind of just rock on the balls of your feet. And um, also just make sure you're um, always in line with the camera. Yeah, and that's another thing as a photographer that drives me nuts. You'll tell the subject, oh, I want you just to pretend like you're walking. And they'll come all the way over here. <laughs> and then they'll walk like this. And they'll wonder why... They, you didn't get the shot or wonder why you only took one picture. And that's because, of course, you have to hit it right here. And that's the other thing. All of our light is coming here from the right. I've got a Nanlite Forza 720 and an Ellen Chrome 190 centimeter softbox. And, of course, there's some window light coming in as well. But when the light's over on this side, a lot of times I'll get the subject moving this way and posing away from me. So I'll just tell them to play towards the camera or to the towards the light, but not away from it necessarily like is this a mistake you see models do a lot of the time i do i yeah. do um you know as even um you know just uh seasoned uh models they don't know where the light is uh it's you know they're trying to find the light they're taking time from the shoot uh as well as just uh getting as many photos as they could um a lot of uh, a big mistake is when people are models turn around and they you know they want to give one of, you know over the shoulder you always got to know where your light is um and when you don't uh you'll see the mistakes and the outcome when the, you get the pictures back yeah as a photographer you can sort of have two approaches you can be uh reactive or you can be active so what i mean by reactive is and that's how i do things most of the time is that I'm looking for things that are wrong and awkward and then trying to fix them. Or you can be active and you can pose them like a mannequin. So if you're posing a model with some experience and you're trying to actively pose them like a mannequin, it sort of leads to really rigid shots and they're not very fluid. That works for a person with no experience whatsoever. But if I came in and I started micromanaging Jason and kept telling him like, okay, put your left foot slightly forward, put your right foot slightly back. Now go ahead and turn about 15 degrees to your right. He would get <laughs> very annoyed with it. So the best thing is just sort of to let it flow and look for things that are wrong. If you can think of maybe as the subject, if, if you're doing something, and I probably can't even do it at the moment, I see this a lot with sitting actually, where they'll be sitting there and their foot is in some very awkward, like painful looking position and I know it's painful to them and it's painful for me looking at it so just know that even though you've probably heard something like if it hurts it looks good it it probably doesn't look good if it hurts <laughs> and also look out for people that are sort of uh, pigeon toed with their toes together you could fix that as well just make sure that it's a little wider and speaking of wider especially with men normally you want them to be take up more space and be bigger in the shot. And so having them, you know, like closed off like this, well, that's sort of a little feminine. Maybe this is even more feminine. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid things like that. You want them to look bigger in the picture overall, because the big thing about men is like having wide shoulders 
and a big chest. And speaking of sort of angles here, I guess I'm going up a little fast. Let's talk about <laughs> legs. What do you think about legs? Uh, legs, uh, you know, it, as well as the feet, you know, you just have to make sure not to keep your, your, your stature when you're taking pictures. You don't want to be too close. A as a man, you, you know, as John said, have a little uh, wide base, wider base. Um, make sure you know where the light is and also uh, just you know have have a good distance to where it doesn't look awkward on the on the photographs yeah and then as we sort of and another thing is like if you're keeping your feet sort of in these positions and we're seeing air between there then the feet position usually determine the leg position so mm -hmm. that's kind of always works too then coming up here to the waist you want to be careful because most guys carry their weight around their waist and so if things look too broad here in the camera just turn them a little bit and then that will give you a more narrow profile to the camera but let's say if they were really a bigger guy and you turn them to the side now you've just made them look somewhat pregnant so don't turn them too far just turn them a little bit and this will be more slimming this is not slimming at all <laughs> and this may be uh, too broad in general even i was posing a model last week and so he uh, he was very fit guy, but for some reason, like the width of his waist just looked a little too wide. And so I just always had to watch it and make sure that he turned a little bit to improve that. Is that sort mm -hmm. of, you don't have that problem. No, but. no, <laughs> I don't. Uh, no, but uh, you're, you're definitely correct. Uh, another thing uh, as um, to, you know, uh, speak more about the legs is a lot of models, uh, especially men, um, lie about their their size <laughs> so you know I do have really big feet though <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know you you as a model you you know you also need to be able to take direction but also uh, get re uh, you know um, constructive um, criticism where someone might tell you oh you know you're a, you're not a 30 30 you're actually a 32 30 you know it might you know take a little shot to the ego, but you don't want to look like you have chicken legs because you, you have on some, some super skinny jeans and you know, you have this big broad, you know, um, you know, top and um, you, you just, you got to be proportioned with your clothes as well as, you know, look good on the camera. And if that takes, um, you know, wearing something that is not your size or it is actually your size because <laughs> you're lying about it then you know you should uh just um listen and, and maybe uh change up your wardrobe a little bit and we can see it the other way too like i remember when i was um 21 or something like uh one of my mentors he was like oh you're a 44 xl that's your jacket size well i'm a 42 xl or 42 l i don't Yes, 42L, I haven't seen XL in quite a while. <laughs> but just think about that. That would have been way too long for me and it would have been way too big for me and now everything through here looks sloppy. Definitely. So since we came up here, let's talk about maybe hands or arms. What things do you think should, they should be doing with that? Um, well, never want to touch your face. Um, you know, if you are just, uh, you know, uh, I always been told when you're, you know, a lot of models want to do a, a, a look like this, um, never want to put your thumb in your hands, um, just kind of rest it on the outside and just kind of, you know, just give it a, a just a, a, just a touch because, you know, as we were talking before, yeah. you don't want to punch yourself in the face, you know, <laughs> just give yourself a nice little uppercut. That doesn't look good. Um, you know, so um, even with, uh, you know, pockets with your hands, um, you don't want to just go all the way in because it's going to pull on the pant or the jean and it looks bad on camera. And, you know, you always just want to exaggerate it. So just kind of just rest it just a little bit. And, um, you know, um, you don't have to go all the way in. Um, you know, the yeah, rule is model bad behavior. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it just looks bad. You know, it looks like you have change in your, you know, a bunch of quarters in your pocket or something, you know, and it's not laundry day. So uh, <laughs> we definitely don't want to look like that. The other thing I've heard is that in dress pants, you can put the whole hand in and that looks OK. Mm. But in jeans, that looks really weird. And the same thing, like if you put your hand in like this, well, now your thumb points 
it's like a small line pointing here and we don't necessarily want that you want that thumb to go down and so you could sort of do this look i've heard feels good in in jeans but not in dress pants true That's very so true. so those are some things to think of so um thumb in in jeans hand in all the way in dress pants works if you have the thumb out don't point it horizontal point it down and that'll get you going in a good place definitely and then um then what i was going to say earlier was um the other thing is you can have some go-to poses which usually involve the jacket so this will work um, in a casual jacket as well but one thing that's good about photographing men in a suit jacket is that you have all sorts of options for where they can put their hands because you want to give them activities that they can do and you want to give them normal things that they might do so it might be that they're adjusting their watch or looking at it or that sort of thing um, they might be pulling their sleeve out and because i'm always too tall and my shirts always end up <laughs> shrinking and going up my arm it's very normal for me to be pulling this out because you normally want this to be about a half inch or one centimeter i think out from uh from the shirt sleeve so that's another thing that you can be doing in a like wedding tuxedo shot this might be like adjusting the cuff link and that sort of thing and this brings you some space across here the other thing you want to look out for and i'm not saying i have it now but you want to have a hole between the armpit and the elbow inside elbow and the side of the body that way it just looks much more interesting to have that triangle there rather than not having it there so keep the elbows out a little bit and that will help you get that space in there do i have the space you do have the okay space. you're good you're good <laughs> so um yeah so that'll always help as well there's some other things you can think of um other than uh, you know the the spacing uh, you know, you, you always just uh, want to come up with some creative uh, poses. Uh, always be moving as well. Uh, it's the number one thing for me is I always got, have to keep moving. I see so many times I've seen other models, they're just statues. And, you know, you don't want to just take 50 poses or 50 shots of the same pose. Um, you know, always just, you know, Keep moving, you know, it doesn't matter if you kind of go over and do the same one over again, just keep moving, you know, and um, that'll definitely take away from the stress off of the photographer and as well as you, because you don't want to sit here and, you know, get back all your photos and you have four photos to choose from, from 160 shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so as a photographer, I'm always encouraging them to move every time. Um, and one of the things I'll, as well, and one of the things that I'll say is, um, look, we're gonna take 500 photos. Uh, five of them are gonna be good. Don't worry about any particular one and we'll get the shot. It's fine. And the other thing is maybe encourage them to do some asymmetry. So like if they want to grab their jacket, it, it looks okay if their hands are together, but it looks more interesting if they're not together. Mm. And that can sometimes help too. And then when they bring their hand up to their face, in addition to punching themselves in the face, one thing I'll say, and I have to always shake my hand to do this, <laughs> is to get the fingers in sort of a wave position so that um, they're like little stairs. And then if I bring that up to my chin, it just looks more interesting to you as the photographer, even in the profile, because you're seeing some differences in elevation and there's different things the light can hit and, and come off of. So that can help too. Um, as far as the lighting goes, right now I'm short lit. That means that the light is on this side of me and I'm facing the light and you're seeing a more narrow portion of my face illuminated. If this was a very contrasty environment, it would be, I know that it's kind of softer lighting, so you're not seeing, you're still seeing detail over here, but let's imagine there's no detail on this side. My face would look really narrow because the light's coming from over there and that's gonna make me look thinner. And then the same thing is if I turn this way, now I'm broad lit and that means that a broader part of my face is lit and that's gonna look, make my face look larger and more masculine. So if you have a thin person and you turn them this way, this can, a male subject, that can be good. If it's a woman, it might not work out so well. And if it's a larger guy, their head might look gigantic. So just kind of keep that in mind. And speaking of which, if you do have a larger overweight guy 
and well, I do this with both sexes too, I'll sort of say, um, stick your chin forward and down slightly. Mm -hmm. And now even from the front, it doesn't look as weird <laughs> as from the side, but that makes the neck look thinner and sort of can get rid of a double chin situation. And of course, double chins are always better from an elevated position, so that can help out and make things better too. Mm -hmm. Did you have any more ideas maybe? Um, you know, always um, with photographers uh, and, you know, going, to looking at the model, always be able to, to talk to your, to your model. Um, you know, strike up a conversation. A lot of times, uh, being that you've never met, you always just want to have some type of rapport just to, you know, get, get the, uh, you know, the jitters out, uh, especially if it's a first time model are uh, they've you know they're there with their parent it could be a, a child so uh, you know conversation is always key uh, and you know also as a model um, a, a dark you know a, being a black model um, you always like I said find your light you know with um, being uh, you know darker skinned uh, you don't want to fade into the the darkness uh, you know always make sure you you know where the light is so you can get that the bounce from from the light when the camera shoots uh, that you know really shows your face uh, you don't want to lose you know that in the in the shot at all so and the reason why I usually with my lighting am trying to be or trying to teach accuracy it with using a light meter and making sure that your exposure is exactly right is because I think that it's our responsibility as photographers to accurately represent our subjects as the way that they appear so that we're not doing something where we're underexposing them by half a stop because maybe we think that that makes a white shirt look better or something, but then we're making the person darker than they are and it's just not really respectful to the person. And that's why I always think that we should strive to, to make the, a correct representation of our subjects. Mm. So let's go ahead and we're gonna switch over now and Jason is gonna give us his favorite poses while standing, interacting with a ladder, and then sitting on a stool. All right, so I've added a V-flat white side out to the set because I didn't exactly like the way the shadows look when I took a test frame of Jason. I should have probably done that for me so I would look better, but I definitely wanna make sure he looks his best. So right now he's gonna show us his go-to poses for standing shots. So what do you got for us? Uh, first pose will be, uh, I like the, the walking pose, uh, just still. You have your legs, you know, make sure you have some uh, good spacing. Uh, just rock back. And sometimes I'll even, you know, get a little, like I, I was saying, have the, you know, exaggerate the, the hand in the pocket. You don't want to pull. Okay. And you just kind of. Great. That looks great. So what I'm seeing is that his right hand is covered a little. So if you just, yep, just rotate your shoulders a little bit. Yeah, or something there. It's one of my <laughs> running pet peeves is not seeing both hands. So um, that always helps. And as you can see, my thumb is down. It's not. <laughs> not pointing. Not pointing. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> oh, and for the photos, I'm shooting at 1 250th of a second at F4 at ISO 1000. And I'm doing that because I want to use the same light that we were using for the video for the photo. So I'm just using continuous light. So just know that's what I'm doing. That's why there's no transmitter on here and you're not seeing a flash. So just give it a broad masculine shot here. Always have your, you know, give, give uh, like John was saying, you know, have the holes, uh, the negative space, uh, spacing in your legs and the feet pointing. Make sure you know where your light is. Thumbs aren't going straight in, pointing, but they're pointing down. Exaggerate it on the pockets. Great, and then just look right here. Perfect. And then turn that way a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Bring your right elbow forward a little. Great, I just got the gap going in there. That looks great. So on women, a lot of times you're trying to create that S curve. On men, you're trying to be able to create you know, sharp angles like the elbow and the knee with mm -hmm. gaps of air between them. Turning to the other side, we're just gonna kind of just uh, give a, a little back pocket action here. 
you know, um, something different. Awesome. Look right in the camera. Great. Bring your, I was going to say bring your chin down a little, but yeah. Um, <laughs> tilt your head back over that way a little bit. Great. Perfect. And then turn your nose that way just a little bit more. This will open him up to the light a little bit more and get more light under his right eye. So just go a little that way. Tip the top of your head back over. Great. Perfect. And that line that you've got going, there's like a line going on there from his head down to his feet, a diagonal. It sort of gives this movement that he's going to the right side of the shot and that, that feels really good. I'll be sure not to use the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see it's already half gone. I did that. <laughs> All right, so one styling tip, you might have noticed that my shirt collar was probably way under this jacket. Just make sure you're watching for this, that this comes up so that the person looks nice and neat. Now we're gonna go over Jason's top poses for going with the ladder. So what do you got for us over here? Always, you know, make sure you don't have too much space when you're on a ladder. Um, you know, make sure it's comfortable. I would usually just go to the bottom uh, you know, one hand either in the pocket or just have it laying on the, you know, front at your side. Okay, cool. Let's see it in your pocket. Great. Now that looks really nice. Perfect. So a lot of times you see me using ladders and shots, and it's not necessarily because I love ladders. It's just that a ladder is a nice classic prop that adds elevation to the shot. And one thing to keep in mind when you're propping out a set is just to create visual interest. So there's the model's head, then there's something else happening in there, and then maybe there's something happening lower in the frame. So it could be their feet, feet down there, the ladder gives them something to pose with and do with their hands or do with their knee or their feet as well. So it just gives a lot of options for the model. So, so what do you have for us next now? Do you mind if I... Uh, you can do whatever you okay. want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can climb it if it's you want. It's your show. <clears throat> oh, God. <laughs> okay, this is making me very nervous. <laughs> I, don't, I broke part of the ladder before. So, oh, I, see. Um, <laughs> I will try not to move too much. Okay. So I didn't plan for this, and I can't get the camera up high enough right now to match this pose. But no, go ahead and right, do should it. Should I keep going? Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, come down that one Come step. down on one? All right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, careful, though. This... <clears throat> and that's exactly and that's what I thought would happen. <laughs> okay, we're going to be right back with another ladder because this one is Go done ahead. for. Oh my gosh. All right, so we got a new ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to keep insurance. That's part of what you should have as a business person. And uh, make sure the model has a tetanus shot. Um, so... This ladder is a little worse for wear, too. Maybe buy something at Home Goods. Maybe that would be a better idea. Okay, good. All right. Hopefully this works. Remember when I said about lying to uh, <laughs> photographers? About, so I'm not actually 175. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm actually 195. <laughs> uh, All right, right, so let's see the pose again. All if right. you're dare, If you're willing to try. I will try. Okay, good. So I got to bring the camera up higher. There shouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> All right, great. I'm just going to tilt down a little. Yeah, this actually looks very nice. Let's see. Maybe tilt your head over this way a little and bring your chin up slightly. Great. And then at the risk of breaking something, um, what if you were to uh, switch your feet? Um, Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. I just that was too straight together down there. And okay. so this actually looks much nicer. I'm going to widen out here a little bit to get the bottom of the ladder. That'll help preserve height. One thing when you've got someone high up, you don't necessarily want to chop off uh, their feet. You want to show the elevation. So possibly including the bottom of the ladder would improve the composition. I'll let you guys judge. Let us know in the comments below. And now we can move on to our next pose. So what have you got for us now? All Hopefully right. it won't be so high. No, <laughs> it won't. <laughs> next pose, uh, we're just gonna sit on the ladder here. Uh, 
awesome. Yeah, this looks nice. It's very nice and tall. Turn your head this way a little bit, a little more. I'm going to lower my camera slightly. Great. Perfect. One of the difficulties I have in this studio is that the ceiling is 10 feet tall and I should not have bought this rack with six papers on it. Um, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. The new place will be two feet taller. Stay tuned. You'll see a lot of videos on that too. And let's switch over to the stool. Hopefully he won't break this. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is older than my mom. We'll find out. I just wanted to take a quick break and let you know that if you enjoy learning from me in these videos here on YouTube, you might also enjoy learning from me on my members only website, The Academy with John Gress. And on The Academy, you'll get access to longer format tutorials than what you'll find here on YouTube. I add one video, at least one video every month. You'll also get access to two live monthly Q&A and critique sessions where a small group of members get together with myself and we'll talk about anything that you're interested in. You'll also get discounts and in-person workshops and access to a members only Facebook group. So to sign up for a free trial, go to johngress.com slash academy. All right, and now that he's gonna be lower, I can bring the camera down lower. Um, one thing you wanna think about when working with male subjects is you wanna make them look more powerful. So the lowest camera angle you can use, the more powerful they will look. Of course, I couldn't go any higher because of this backdrop thing I got going on here, but um, you guys get the, the general idea. I like to just swing uh, over to a profile, you know, put uh, one leg up just to give you a little more uh, dimension and, you know, keep the, the spacing with the, the arms and the body, uh, you know, as, as good as you can. And, don't want to lose your hand, so always try to rest it on, you know, on your knees, um, you know, somewhere where it can be seen, and of course, yeah, a good posture. Yeah, it looks better on the left. Yeah. Um, and it's maybe more normal. <laughs> bend your left elbow a little bit. Yeah. So, um, spin your body more away from me. Yeah. Okay. And now straighten out your left leg. Your right leg could have stayed. Uh, I think I got it wrong. <laughs> no, I got it right. Yes, there you go. Okay, now maybe bring your left hand on top of your right leg. Great. So, and straighten out your left leg a little bit more. Okay, so the goal here that I was getting him in this pose for was so that you could see um, a bend in his knee and then, um, and then his leg coming out of where his shin is. So his knees didn't line up anymore and it just gave more interest. And we've got that gap there between his heel and the stool. We've got that space that's opened up there between his, his feet as well. And then of course, you've got those gaps between his elbow and his body on each side. And as you can see, I got this ladder back here, which is going right to the trash. <laughs> Way to go. You broke grandma's ladder. <laughs> It was someone's ladder, I don't know. <laughs> Turn your head this way a little bit. Great, okay. All right, so he's a little off the background, but we can fix that in post. It just will work good for the demonstration. Maybe bring your left toe off the floor. Yeah, just gives it a little more space over there. Looks a little cooler. You need something? Oh, that's the pose. Pose, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You said you need well, say what you, now say what you're doing. All right, so what I'm doing here is, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of lean in. Um, you know, I, 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 I like to do things that are more natural. Uh, this doesn't really feel natural. It kind of looks like I'm about to jump on the stool. But, uh, you know, just kind of give some dimension, move your legs, um, one up, one down, or one back. And uh, <clears throat> just you have a nice strong pose with your arms, kind of show off your muscles a little bit, and uh, you know just a good uh, face. Great. Let me shoot a few more here. Bring your chin up a little bit. Okay, this is one of my favorite poses for men in general because it feels very imposing, and the fact that the camera is lower than the model gives the model a lot of power. Now I could. Uh, I can't zoom in anymore, but I'm gonna show you in post. So I'm gonna come over here to the computer, I'm gonna grab my crop tool, and I'm just gonna bring it up so that I'm right below the bottom of the stool. And now you can see that we've really filled the frame and just made the model look very uh, powerful. 
So I would do that with a lens, but I don't want to switch it out and or roll up there closer. I just want to keep things going so Jason can show us his next pose. But this framing will work a lot better with this particular pose. So the next pose here, I'm just going to go straight on. Maybe turn it a little bit here. Yeah, this always looks great. Maybe just move your left hand a little so I can see a gap between your elbow there. Um, there you go, yeah. So now I see that gap of light there between his left elbow and the right side of his body. And then turn your head towards the light just slightly and bring your chin up a little bit. Yeah, that looks really strong. All right, everyone, I hope that helped and made sense. Make sure to check out Jason's Instagram. I'll put it down here below. Remember to carry liability insurance if you're going to use an old rickety ladder. And as always, stay safe, especially with that insurance. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.